All right, let's continue our face-off between the dual-core processing HTC Sensation and Motorola Atrix 4G with a little closer look at the user interface on both of our contestants, and they are both quite different. The HTC Sensation, again, runs Android 2.3 Gingerbread, and it has HTC Sense 3.0 user interface, user interface, easy for me to say, which is HTC's latest. And the Atrix offers Android 2.2 Froyo with Motorola's Moto Blur user interface and again it's not their latest version there's a newer version currently out on the Droid X2 so we'll take a look at both of these but on both phones you're going to get seven different panels that you can customize with either the situation of the sensation either Android or HTC widgets application shortcuts bookmarks folders or contact information and on the Atrix 4G you can see again seven different panels Now, there's an awful lot of customization that's available. First thing I noticed on the Sensation when I started using it, as you not notice, it does 360 degrees. It used to be when you get to the end on one side, you'd have to scroll back to get to the other. It just goes around in a circle now, which is pretty slick. I guess you'd call that 360 degrees. Take a look at some of the widgets on the um, Sensation. Clock weather, typical HTC. This is bookmarks. If it'll load, there we go. And again, you've got a couple different choices on each. You've got a Gmail widget, which is nice. Something been available in the last few. I don't know why it's not picking it up. There's a weather widget. And again, you can get different cities. And not only does it have the graphic effects, but I think you can hear it. It also has sound effects now, too. See if it's raining anywhere. Doesn't look like we're going to have any luck. But so you also get sound effects along with the graphics effects. This is Friendstream, which ties into Facebook, Twitter, as well as MySpace. Uh, their news widget which is loading, music widget, a couple profile widgets, a stock widget. And this is their watch widget, in other words, for uh, movies that you download or for your library. Realistically, as far as available widgets, am I going to have to kill one to make this work? Yeah, let's get rid of Gmail since it's not uh, cooperating anyway. We'll go in simply holding down, get some haptic feedback. We c Oop, that's not what I wanted. Let's get rid of that. Sorry for that. That might make the edit, might not. All right, browse all HTC widgets. You've got a total of 83 different widgets available from HTC to use. And again, they come in numerous sizes and shapes, as you can see, which is going to be considerably more. Plus, you have Google, excuse me, Android widgets as well, plus whatever widgets you might um, grab onto from downloading applications. And as far as customization, you've got different scenes which basically move around the different widgets and you can create your own. You've got skins which really give a different look to the user interface altogether. And again, you can join HTC Hub and download more wallpapers, widgets, application shortcuts, bookmarks, folders, and you can see all the rest. So there's a, a lot available in, as far as customizing your uh, smartphone with HTC's new Sense. On the Atrix 4G, again, to give you an idea, here's the, uh, the clock widget. This is their weather widget, the calendar widget, music widget, which is Android. These are their power button widgets. This is a, a contact, quick contact widget, which allows you to uh, show a picture, and then you can set either mobile or message, whatever you want. This is their sticky note widget, which is pretty handy. That's a gallery widget. What else have we got? This is uh, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, this is for uh, unread um, email messages text messages, I believe, sorry. This is their RSS feed widget. This is a gallery widget. It's pretty cool. It's got a shortcut to the camera, to the gallery, and also you can uh, set it up to show pictures. And this is a status update widget for uh, Facebook. Now, as far as available widgets for Motorola, there's anything not, I mean, that's the entire list. So as you can tell, there's not anywhere near the amount of customization available on the Atrix 4G as there is on the um, HTC Sensation. Sorry for the um there. Uh, as far as notification bars, we've got some differences here. On the HTC Sense, it's going to show you your last eight applications that you opened up at the top along with your notifications. And you can also go to Quick Settings. Oh, 
try that one more time. Quick settings, which will give you some connectivity manager shortcuts, turn your Wi-Fi on and off, Wi-Fi hotspot, mobile network on and off, Bluetooth, GPS, all settings, and also give you a, a look at the total memory available. On the Atrix 4G, you're going to get your basic Android uh, notification system. And again, you can tap on those to go directly to it or hit clear or hit back and just fold it up. And again, if you don't take care of a notification, it'll continue to remind you in the upper left-hand corner. As far as moving amongst the panels, you notice on the Atrix 4G, when I slide over, I get these dots down here at the bottom that represent each of the panels so I can move between them. I don't have a pinch, um, what's the word I want, gesture that I can use. On the HTC Sensation, I can hold down on the home key. Oop. I can tap on the home key from the home screen. It'll give me a seven panel overview. I can tap on any one, plus I can pinch on any one of them to go move quickly between the different panels as well. And then obviously touching on the home key will get you back to the home screen. Holding down on the home key on both will bring up the recent apps application, show you the last eight applications that you use. And again, just tapping on any one will take you directly to it. Really didn't need to do voice search, but anyway, there you go. So that's moving between them, notification bars. Let's look at the main menus on both. On the Atrix 4G, very simply vertical menu. As far as customization, not a heck of a lot. You can manage your apps from here, which is going to take you into your task manager. And that's about it. On the HTC Sensation, you can switch it to a list view. As you can see there, you can have a list of either favorites or frequently used and then downloaded apps as well. So you've got quite a bit more available. Uh, you can also Oh, that was downloaded. Let me get back to all. You can also share apps from here, and you can also delete apps from here. Something that's a little bit new is that it now moves in a panel format. You can see the gray line right here between the panels. So you don't get it. doesn't doesn't freely scroll from top to bottom. It moves from panel to panel. I don't know if it's a positive or a negative, uh, but that's a look at that. What else did I want to show you? Is there anything else exciting here? Uh, I mean, you could spend all day long on HTC Sense 3.0. So I think for now, that's a quick look at the difference in the inter user interface between the HTC Sensation and Motorola Atrix 4G. Let's continue on with our face-off today. Let's get into messaging on our two combatants. And we'll start with the HTC Sensation. And what I really want to do is go into settings first. So let's go back to the home page and let's get into settings for keyboard and there it is language and keyboard and I don't think we're gonna use the Thai keyboard or the Vietnamese keyboard so we'll go with touch input for right now and I want to go down to trace keyboard settings and we've got that turned on and we can determine what color we want that to be uh, let's take a look at the prediction and let's see text input and we've got text prediction turned on I don't think we need sound feedback alright so we're all set so one of the things that's available on the HTC Sensation is their own Sense Swipe, if that's the way to put it. Uh, taking a look at the keyboard, you've got symbols and numbers available on Long Press. Capitalization over here in the far left. You've got speech to text, but I think that you have to hold it. Call John on Tuesday. And that's not what I, I didn't want to put that up there, did I? Let's try it down here. Let's try it one more time. But again, you have to hold it. Call John on Tuesday. So that works very well. Again, you don't get capitalization, but no problems there. You've also got numbers and symbols over here in the lower right if you need to get at them. And you've got an enter key as well as a back key. And let's try for our E T I N G meaning on. D N E S D A Y. Uh, that totally faked it. Three e -S -D -A -Y. Wednesday. Oh, it's just not getting Wednesday for some reason. All right. W E. Oh. There we go. Wednesday. All right. So not too bad for our muttering on Wednesday. Obviously, not one of my finer moments. Take a look at the keyboard in landscape as well. Don't forget to bring the ice. Don't forget to bring the ice. Worked quite well. So you see text prediction works great. 
Nice comfortable keypad, nice layout. Again, you can reduce the keyboard by tapping right there or tapping back on it to bring it back up. Change languages right here with the long press. So nothing really tricky there. Let's see what we've got in the way of attachments. The picture, video, audio, app recommendation. So picture, video, you've got a direct link to the gallery or to the camera, which is great. Same thing with audio. App recommendation, location, contact, V-card, and appointment V-card. So a good selection of uh, attachments as well. All right, let's take a look at adding a message in the Atrix 4G. And I think we can just tap here to get to input methods. You can see we have swipe or multi-touch. Let's take a look at multi-touch first. Here's our multi-touch keypad. And again, there are no long presses for numbers and symbols. So they're all accessed in the lower left-hand corner. This is also long press will get you into your settings as well, which you can see right here. And you've got a choice on a number of different items. Auto capitalization, sound on key press, we really don't need. All right. And again, we've got speech to text. Call John on Tuesday. No problem. Works quite well. Again, you don't get capitalization. And then let's take a look at this in landscape as well. There we go. For our... Oh. Next Wednesday, and it didn't get Wednesday. That surprises me. I'll try that one more time. Oop. There we go. And I had to pick a suggestion to get the capitalization, but that worked fine. All right, for our meeting next Wednesday. And again, it's a nice size keyboard when you're in landscape. And I don't want that. I want this input. And let's take a look at the swipe keypad. And it always blows me away to see a swipe keypad in white or light gray, whatever that might be. And we're going to be don't forget the ice. And we got a little don't forget DVD I've. Well, not too close, but anyway, works just fine. There's swipe in um, portrait. And again, you've got smiley faces. If you're long press, you don't get the actual picture. You can also go into main menu to insert. It's going to ask me to put a recipient in first. So you are A. So I'll put myself in. Now we can go and let's take a look at we have the way of attachments. Again, we've got a direct link to the camera and the gallery, which is great. Record audio, video. I think the only thing that's different, we've got a slideshow here. I don't recall if we had a slideshow before. We've got a name card, which we had on the other, but they also had a, a V card for calendar on the Atrix. So I don't think we have... I think we're one shy of what was available as far as attachments on the HTC Sensation. So again, there's a look at both of the keyboards. Let me show you the swipe in landscape as well. And again, long press over here, you can change language. Uh, also with swipe, you've got long press for both numbers and symbols. Or you've got a symbol key with numbers that's accessible down here as well. And again, you have speech to text with swipe. All right, so there's a look at the two different messaging applications on the HTC Sensation and Atrix 4G. It's time to wrap up today's face-off featuring the HTC Sensation and Motorola Atrix 4G with our browser comparison. Got them both running off the same Wi-Fi network. I've cleared the cache and history on both. They've both been updated to Adobe Flash Player 10.3. What else do I have to tell you? And I've got Flash fully enabled on both. And I think that's it. Don't forget to stop by SmartPhoneMe.com. Check out the winner of today's face-off, along with my written review, as well as photos and videos taken from both of, or by both of today's contestants. All right, let's kick this off. We'll start out with SmartPhoneMe.com. Wherever it is, come on, where are you? I got it on one. There it is. And we're off. And in person, the white color of the screen in the Atrix 4G is much wider than on the uh, Sensation. If I said that right, there we go. Okay, that was the Atrix 4G got there first, followed closely behind by the Sensation. Both very smooth. No issues with either one. Double tap to zoom in, or it gives you when you've got the same resolution on a smaller display. Pinch to zoom, very smooth. Let's see. And then the sensation dynamically rewraps the text, which is very slick. 
Any rendering problems? Both of them look like they've got it. And again, the Atrix feels just a little bit smoother. Not a heck of a lot, but a little bit. All right, let's head over to Engadget. Find it on both. There it is on one. Where are you, Engadget? There it is on the other. And we're off. And they're both out of the chute quick. Or quickly out of the chute. Would probably be a better way to phrase it. And it looks like it's going to be Atrix 4G again. And then the HTC Sensation right behind it. And the Atrix just feels a little smoother overall. Let's double tap to zoom in on both. So you see no problems with rendering. Pinch to zoom on both of them. Very responsive. Double tap. Dynamically rewraps. That is so slick. Double tap to zoom all the way out. Your rendering issues on either one of them? Nope. Well, it's just very smooth, very responsive. All right, let's put them to the test. Let's head over to CNN and let's run a flash video on both. There it is on one. Where is it on the other? There it is. And we're off. To this point, the Atrix 4G has been a little quicker at loading web pages than the HTC Sensation. See if that continues. And our winner here is going to be the Atrix 4G again. Again, no issues. Very smooth on both. Let's double tap to zoom in. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Well, let's go back. One nice thing about quick browsers is even when you make a mistake it covers it up pretty quick and where are we here we go and let's take this and we're off and the sensation looks like it might get there first yep see what happens as far as actually paying, playing them Well, lucky us, we got two commercials as opposed to just one. We don't get much luckier than that, do we? Hopefully, we'll get to the content eventually. All right, there's a look at our browser comparison. What I noticed, it, again, when we first loaded the uh, commercials on the Flash video, a little bit herky-jerky, but both of them seemed to spool it up and play it uh, smoothly, relatively quickly. It looked as if on the last portion, the actual content we were after, the uh, sound never really synced up with the video. Not quite sure why. Maybe that was me. If, if you notice something different, let me know. Um, but both of them handled all of the browsing very, very well. Both of the dual-core processors, 768 megabytes of RAM, a gigabyte of RAM, both handled it, all the situations very well. But the uh, Atrix 4G was definitely quicker in um, uh, loading up web pages. So anyway, there's our face-off between the HTC Sensation and Motorola Atrix 4G. My name is Craig. I hope that's been helpful. Take care.